All right, welcome everyone. I'm gonna get started. We have, um, we're here until seven and it's gonna be a hard seven that we're off. So I'm gonna begin while I continue um, speaking. There, of course, there'll be others joining, but I will get started. So welcome. Now, with Neva Lines, of course, who don't know, I am Dr. Neva, the CEO of Neva Lines. Neva Lines is pretty much a professional development company where we focus on the development of entrepreneurs. This is not a full-fledged PowerPoint. This is just a PowerPoint for me to remember what I need to say, because obviously, like everyone else, sometimes things, you know, I just forget the main key points. So we believe in to educate, to empower, and engage. There are a few upcoming events that we have. We have June 12th. And June 12th, we pretty much have the foundation for business development, and that will be done by Chase. We have a social media marketing. And we have a um, very lovely young lady. That's her expertise, Tony. She's going to be hosting that. And August 14th, at this is a live event at the um, African American Museum in Hempstead. We have the National Black Business Month Mixer. Right? And that's from 5 to 8. Right? At this time, I am going to pass it. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to pass it over to Natasha. Thank you, Dr. Neva, and good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Natasha Castillo, and I am a community manager with J.P. Morgan Chase. Really excited to be here this evening with all of you. Happy Wednesday. I know it's beautiful weather outside, and you could be anywhere, but you're here to embark on this conversation with us this on this evening. So, um, you, I'm sharing my screen and I know you can see this welcome link and I really just want to take a moment to express the importance of this, right? Because as my, as my role as a community manager, my focus is really to close the racial wealth gap that exists within our minority communities. And my mission to do that is I actually curate and host financial health conversations on numerous topics, right? From, you know, how to build a budget to understanding credit. Um, and all in an effort to really advance minority home ownership, support our minority entrepreneurs, and just improve the general financial health within our community. But to show JP Morgan Chase that we have participants, and I'm not just talking to myself, we do have a registration link, which is in the um, the slide that you'll see. So take you know a moment. Really takes like less than thirty seconds to jot this down. Enter it into your browser or enter it into your phone and just fill out the questions. Because not only does it show that you're here this evening and participating, but what's going to happen is in a week from today, Chase is going to send you an email asking you two questions. They're going to ask one, were you here? And you're going to say yes. And they're going to say, well, what was your overall experience? And it's going to be on a scale of one to 10. You know, nine means it was fine. 10 means you enjoyed it. It was informative. You, you know, you really found the time spent together valuable and you want more. And then they're also going to ask, well, if you want more, like what other content do you want to see? Right. And please, that is so critical. It's through the feedback from participants that we've been able to offer now five wealth management conversations. We've had conversations on, you know, parents were saying we want to be able to know how to talk to your children about finances. So we want to know what you want to know. So this way we can bring that to you at a local branch near you. So I'm just going to leave that up for another like 30 seconds before we start to get into this evening's conversation around making sure make your cash work for you.
and just a little bit about myself and my role. So I've been with the firm for 16 years. I've been a community manager for going on three years. And this initiative is part of J.P. Morgan Chase's racial equity commitment. Um, and it was born, you know, in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, because we really saw um through the pandemic, right, the disparities that existed within some of our communities. And I actually have the privilege of supporting, you know, parts of Western Nassau County, which extends all the way into Southeast Queens. So there's also some contact information here. I do want to preface it that today's conversation you know, I don't want to hear myself talking the whole time. So no question is a silly question. As you can see, I've been in the industry for a long time. And also really want this to be interactive, really want it to be, you know, hope that, like I said, you walk away taking, um, you know, some best practices from what we're going to speak about. And I think the conversation that we're having today, it's really now's a great time, because we're approaching um, we're in the middle of the second quarter and, you know, it's always good to stop and reflect and see how you're doing. Plus, I know a lot of people, they've already uh, finished tax season, just wrapped up, you know, so it's always good to check in and see where you are with completing and accomplishing your financial goals. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to touch on, you know, finding your values, using them to shape your goals. As we talk about cash, one thing that you have to understand is really, have you built a budget that's working for you? And then the importance of saving for what matters. So when we think about finding your values, you know, you really, that's really understanding your why and the motivation behind you know achieving some of your those goals that you have for yourself right I know for me growing up education was really important and that was one of my goals was to put myself through uh, school which I did but I also especially when I was really thinking about it because we know the cost of going to some of these universities are is astronomical right really making sure am I planning for this properly? Am I saving? Can I, does this make sense? Can I afford it at this time? Or maybe I need to change my timeline a little bit. So, you know, everyone has different goals that they're trying to accomplish, but really understanding what are your values and how does that align with your financial goals? But, you know, when we think about how we can accomplish the goals that we set out for ourselves, a lot of times we have to think about this B word, which comes up and that's budget, right? So, and also I just want to throw out there with the chat, I know there is a chat box, but I actually won't be engaging. So feel free to use the reactions or come off mute. So if we have the reaction buttons, raise your hand if you've done completed a budget for this year. Just trying to scan, okay. And I see you once for Shella. So great job. Thank you. Now, for those of you, maybe you did, didn't do a budget yet for this year. Um, or if you did, you know, how, how do you feel? Raise your hand if you feel that you're on track when it comes to accomplishing your goals that you set out for yourself this year. Okay, right. So maybe we got some work to do. So it's great that we're having this conversation, right? Because a lot of times when I talk to clients and we talk about the importance of budgeting, it comes up like the budget aspect. It's a do it one time, set it and forget it. And no, that's not what it is, right? Budgeting, it's really going to help you understand your cash flow, right? So you need to understand and really take a look right at your income. So what is that money that's coming in, whether that's your paycheck, whether that you're getting support from either government, family, maybe you you're a business owner, right? What is that income as well? And what are you or and are you keeping it separate? And that's another conversation which you'll hear from one of my colleagues later on about, you know, understanding business and navigating business cash flow. But also, you need to really track and understand where's your money going, right? 
what's going out and we define that as expenses right so some typical expenses you'll have is your housing whether that's mortgage rent transportation um, groceries of course you're going to be utilizing some of that money on yourself Maybe you have dependents like children, right? And I know there's a bucket there as well, which we're going to dive deeper into, which is savings, right? So how much are you putting away for yourself? Are you paying yourself? Because that's critical. So as we, you know, there's always, when we define expenses too, right? A lot of it comes down to this balancing act that we find ourselves having to do between needs versus wants, right? So you, we know we need food. We know we need a home. You know, you know, we need clothes and medicine and things like that. These are all of our essentials. But then sometimes it gets a little tricky because we need food. But do we always need to be dining out at nice restaurants or maybe we should be um, meal prepping and making some meals at home? Okay. Same thing. We know that physical wellness is important, but do we need to go to like a high-end gym? Or maybe we could do something at home or use YouTube videos or something more cost-effective, right? So really identifying what are those essentials for you, right, compared to those sometimes nice-to-haves, non-essentials that we find ourselves um, putting our funds towards. And some expenses, right, we know are going to be fixed. So typically every month, it's the same amount, right? We have our rent payment or a mortgage payment doesn't re really change or fluctuate. Same thing with our car payments, insurance payments, or if you have like any loans. But there's some ways where you have some flexibility, like especially with groceries, right? Maybe you could do some couponing or bulk shopping, like going to Costco's or BJ's. Same thing with dining out. You determine how much you're going to spend and dine out each month and look, taking a look at those hobbies that you have for yourself. So right now, we're going to take a look at an example. This is Maya. Maya is 25 years old. She's single. She has no kids. She's living in the city. Um, but Maya is saying she's not able to save, right? So her goal for herself is she wants to really align and create a budget that aligns to her values. And right now she's trying to save. So if we take a look at her expenses, so she's spending $12.50 a month on rent. She's spending $110 in utilities, $100 on transportation, $250 is groceries, $85 in subscriptions, $85 cell phone, $65 on a nail salon, and $400 dining out. So each month she's spending $2,345. That's her total expenses. So just looking at this, let's say you were helping Maya with her budget. What sticks out to you as a potential way that Maya could find some savings? Dining out. Dining out. Yep, that's huge. 400 a month. Thank you. Anyone else see anything where Maya could find some potential savings? Nail salons. The nail salons. Yeah. I know for some people that's an essential, right? But maybe she could do, um, try to change up what she's doing maybe, or do it herself. That's another option. But thank you. Anyone else? Any ideas? How can we get Maya to, to save? Someone said subscription, groceries. Subscriptions, groceries, yeah, that's true. Um, a lot of times when we actually, we work with clients, we sit down and we do the budget review. The two biggest ways we find potential hidden savings is actually the amount of dining out and unused subscriptions. So that's huge. Um, groceries, you brought up a great point because she's spending 400 a month dining out, right? So is she even using all these groceries that she's buying, you know, that she could take a look and also is she buying like the name brands? Maybe she could switch to a generic brand. So there could be some potential savings there as well. Anyone else? Someone also said um, cell phone. Cell phone. Yeah, you could definitely shop around too. Just because you've had a plan for a long time doesn't mean it's still the best plan for you. Um, so shopping around, maybe she could get a better deal. Also, um, 
And not only just with like cell phone plans, think about like your insurance plans too. Anything any that I miss or did we kind of own? I think we did a great job, right? So if we look where we could help find potential savings for Maya, right? So we know rent, even if maybe she gets a roommate or she finds a different apartment, that's not going to happen right away. That's going to take some time. Same thing with utilities, right? That's also going to take some time. Uh, transportation, I know this wasn't mentioned, but maybe she could get a transit benefit. Maybe, um, you know, she could walk depending how far she's commuting to. So those are potentially some other ways to find some savings. Groceries, we touched upon it, right? So doing bargain hunting, meal prepping, make sure she's actually utilizing the groceries she's, she's purchasing. Subscription, we talked about that. You, you guys mentioned it, right? So canceling any unused subscriptions. The nail salon, I know someone else mentioned that as well. So, you know, trying to do maybe do a simpler manicure type or do it your own cell phone you guys touched on that also shopping around looking for a different deal different plan and then dining out that's huge right so just like cutting back on a dinner or, or a brunch or lunch wherever she's going out and switching that up and with all these adjustments right we found over 250 dollars in savings for maya Right. So now if we looked at her cash flow, her monthly income was is two thousand four hundred prior to doing that budget activity. It's she was spending two thousand three hundred forty five dollars. So every month she had left over fifty five dollars, which, as you remember, right, Maya was saying she felt like she's just getting by month to month and she can't save. So after that budget activity, right, we found three hundred and five dollars so now what should maya do with that 305 dollars kind of touched on it right so definitely want to she wants to be able to save right but we want to make sure she's in the right vehicle as well and and i think it's so important because if you don't do this activity you're not going to be able to know where your money's going. So we have something that we call the 50, 30, 20 rule, which we outline where 50% of your income should be going to your necessary expenses, as we talked about, right? And then I talked, I mentioned with those expenses, you also want to pay yourself. And that's that 30%. But we say, let's divide that 30%. So 15% should go towards, you know, short term savings goal, emergency savings, right? And then the other 15% should go towards long-term goals. And we define like long-term goals as like uh, 10 years plus. And then 20% is, you know, you worked hard for this money, you want to be able to enjoy yourself. So that 20% is for you, right? That could be whether you want to go out to um, a vacation, maybe you get go out with friends, whatever it is. And depending on where you are, it's okay if you're not at that 50, 30, 20 rule. Also, depending on how your expenses are and what's going on, you might even be able to make a different rule for yourself. So for example, I worked with like a young adult. She didn't have much expenses. So she really didn't do like the 50, 30, 20 rule. She was able to put a lot more into savings, which helped her accelerate to reach her goal. But this is like a great guideline if you're trying to figure out how can I, you know, find ways to have more cash for myself and have more savings to reach those goals, right? I know data showed that throughout the pandemic, 46% of Americans stated that they didn't have $500 saved for an unexpected expense, right? Which is huge. So that's why it's so important that we're making sure that we have these emergency funds because as we saw we never know when something unexpected can happen so do you guys um know too speaking of emergency funds so if you are a single individual like maya right what is the recommended amount of expenses that you should have in your savings account for an emergency should be at least three to six months correct that's correct. Thank you. 
And I love your picture. So thank you for sharing. So now my next question is, let's say you're not single. Let's say you have a family, maybe you have some dependents. What is the recommended amount of expenses for an emergency at that point? Someone for two years. Okay. I mean, typically we say two years, maybe that's their comfort zone. We recommend at least like six to nine months. I know more as I talk to more people, they feel more comfortable with having at least 12 months. But hey, if you feel like two years, that's, in, and, and it all depends too, right? Because let's say you're, um, you have a loss of income and things change, right? How quickly are you going to be able to get that income? Every industry is different. But at least getting to like that six to nine buffer, I think that's where you, you're like in a nice comfortable zone in case of those type of emergencies. So just a quick checkpoint, right? So we talked about the differences on how we classify expenses. So such as the monthly car payment, we know that's a fixed fixed expense, right? Also those streaming services that's considered flexible. Also, um, we know medicine, right? We want to make sure we budget and we are prepared for that expense because it's a need essential, right? But an upscale gym membership, that's more non-essential want, nice to have. <clears throat> so definitely, I know some of you didn't raise your hand. I would say now, like I said, it's a great time. <clears throat> We're almost at the midway point of the year. To, to do your budget. And like I said, it's not a set it and forget it. You want to keep going back and doing check-ins when it comes to your budget, because we know things can change, right? Your income could change. Maybe you got um, some unexpected money. You got a bonus, got a tax refund. Well, guess what? Your income is going to change and that's going to impact your budget. Well, so expenses could change. Maybe something happened. Maybe you paid off an expense or maybe you had to add an expense because of life, right? But if you're not doing this activity, you're not really going to know where you're at. And then it's when you actually do the budget activity, you're going to see, you know, one of three things. You're going to see, oh, like now after we helped Maya with the activity, we we found we we're able to have some hidden savings for her to help her reach her goals. Or you'll see maybe you're just flatlining each month and in some cases you'll see um you know there's a deficit you're playing catch up right and that's when you have to keep going back and seeing how can I you know get to a point where that where I'm able to feel comfortable with how much I'm able to save for myself so we do have a budget builder tool um it's also on chase Dot com, But this QR code, if you scan it, it will take you to the online budget builder tool. It is a free resource for anybody to use. You could keep that reference to do a budget for yourself online, or you, it actually has the PDF where you could print it out and put pen to paper. But I think that's a great starting point for everyone. And like I said, I recommend at least <clears throat> doing your budget quarterly because we know that things are always changing throughout the year. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable um, or if you haven't done a budget in a, while, a long time or maybe things are really fluctuating, then do it monthly till you start to see some consistency. So now we found that hidden savings for Maya, right? We found $305. We mentioned that she now should be able to save but we want to make sure you did the activity. How are you going to be able to stick to your plan? So one of the things, you know, is definitely you want to put that money aside and earmark it. Preferential account is put into your savings. And one of the things I like to do is automate it. So this could be the activity where you set it and forget it. So we do have a great tool at Chase, it's called autosave and you create the rule. You could create a dollar amount, you could create a percentage and you specify, you know, every first of the month or 15th or daily, whatever it is, you know, it's gonna do a transfer from your checking to your savings. It could be as small as a dollar a day. You know, if you wanna do it weekly, that's up to you. But at least this way, you know that savings is happen happening automatically for you. 
Also, like I said, continue to track your expenses, continue to do those regular checkups with your budget, make sure that you're really balancing needs versus wants. So you're using your money intentionally to achieve your goals. And also think about having like an accountability partner. So maybe that's a a spouse, maybe that's a trusted family member or friend, but let them know that this is my goal. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. This is what I've set out for myself. And I need you, you to help check in on me to make sure I'm staying accountable. Right. And it just talks about how we utilize some of these accounts. Right. So we know the checking accounts is meant for your day to day activities. So that's where you'll see like the rent and the bills coming out. Right. But then also what I like to do when we have these savings accounts, you can nickname it and you can title it so you know what that money's earmarked for. So you could call the savings account rainy day fund. Or if you're saving for a vacation, that's what it, you could title it vacation. If you're saving for a car, maybe you're saving for a child for their college education. So at least you know what this money's for and it will help you stay on track and be more intentional with where those dollars are going. And then when we think about saving for what matter, we talked about the importance of having that emergency savings fund. So in this example, right, Kyle, his goal is to build his emergency fund up to $500. He says he's going to put away $125 each month for the next four months. So what would be a great resource to help Kyle stay on track? You can use the auto saving tool. Yes, thank you. So auto save would be a great feature to help him to do that. So this way he knows that 125 is automatically going from the checking to the savings so he can reach his goal. Um, when we talked about short term too, so Danny, right, he wants to be able to purchase a car. He wants to save $2,000 for that down payment. He gave himself a timeline of two years. Um, so 24 months. So he's going to be saving $83 each month. So if you look, right, uh, some vehicles where he could put that money is his regular savings. He could look and explore like high yield savings and the differences. So really understand uh, um, and having that timeline is also very important and knowing how much you need. So we have a saying, um, you know, a goal without a dollar amount and a time typically becomes a wish because you really don't have that structure and the foundation to, to know and to stay on track with what the actionable steps to achieve the goal. And then in this example, Leah wants to save for a down payment for her home. So her timeline is six years, 72 months. So she knows she's going to need 389 each month. So these are some um, vehicles for her and where she could put that savings as well. So really important, you know, when it comes to savings, there's two terms I want to just touch on, right, which is interest and interest. That's the money that the financial institutions pay you for keeping your money in the deposit deposited with them. Right. And we, we know that interest is expressed as a percentage. It's calculated based on the interest rate and the amount of money in your account and how long it's in your account. Keep in mind, interest earned is considered income and you may have to pay income tax on it. But also when you're shopping around, right, and you are putting your money into your savings, that's one of the questions you want to ask, right? What is the interest that I'm going to earn? And then compounding is earning interest on interest. So you earn interest on the money uh, of the money that you deposit in your account and that you leave in your account. Plus, you're going to earn interest on that interest in your account. So things to know that even when sometimes interest rates might seem like it's low, it's under. It's really important to understand how the compounding works. So interest could compound daily or monthly or annually. And obviously, that's going to impact how much money you're earning. So that's also a question you want to ask when you're opening up those accounts as well. The more frequent the compounding, the more interest you are going to earn. So while it might not seem like a lot over time, 
with the deposits after a while, it's going to add up. So definitely ask how frequently interest is going to compound when you shop around for your accounts. Right. So here we'll see a couple true or false. Right. So how often interest compounds daily, monthly or annually does not affect how much money you earn. And that is false because it does impact how, how much money you will earn. And then emergency funds are for unexpected expenses you can't reasonably plan for. And that's true, right? Because like life is going to always throw something at you. Um, I could tell you the other day, like when I left my house and I was driving to uh, meet an organization in Queens, I didn't know or plan that I was going to hit a pothole and my tire <laughs> was going to like burst and that I would need a tow truck and a new tire. So by that day, I had an unexpected expense of over $300. But at least I have my emergency fund to lean into, right? So there's always going to be something that happens that we can't anticipate. But that's why it's so important to make sure we have that those backup funds for when things like that happen. And then saving up to buy a $1,200 puppy next year is considered a short-term savings goal. So yes, it is. <laughs> That's true. But keep in mind, too, that while you're also saving um, for the puppy, <laughs> some of our goals have um, – it's also – a longer term and ongoing maintenance with that goal as well because that puppy is going to need to go to the vet you're going to need to buy its food you're going to need additional stuff for the puppy so you also want to make sure you have reserves for when things like that happen or when something pops up for and you've accomplished the goal as well so now that we touched on you know identifying your values how to use them to shape your goals we talked about the importance of building a budget that works for you so this way you can make sure not only are you paying yourself but you're in a great position to reach the goals that you set out for yourself but i know that this month is also national small business month um, and we wanted to just have my colleague senior business consultant akeem jones just touch on you know navigating cash flow from a business perspective so Akeem. Hi, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Awesome. How's everyone doing today? Yes. Great. We can't see you, but we can hear you. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, well, thank you all. I'll keep it short and brief. Um, a lot of um business owners, well, let me don't use the word lot. Over 50% of business owners do not manage their cash flow well. Um over 50% of business owners have less than a 15 day cash flow buffer. And um, something that, you know, could attest to that is when the pandemic happened in 2020, um, for example, when New York was shut down, um, you know, March 14, March 15 by the governor. Um, and then by April, which was basically, um, you know, a few weeks, almost six weeks, it took the government to pass their PPP initiative to help um, business owners, you know, navigate and, and survive the um, the pandemic. Um, over a million businesses got shut down in six weeks time because they did not have um, a cash um, buffer. They did not understand cash flow. And imagine over 50% of business owners have less than 15 days cash buffer and it took the federal government about six weeks to start um, dishing out the PPP and the reason why is most business owners don't understand cash flow the, um, the basic cash flow is cash flow for operating cash flow for investment cash flow for financing and cash flow is just more than just money coming in and out of your business your bank account it's realistically, you know, how money in and out the business is measured. And for example, you could have a positive net income and a negative cash flow and vice versa. So I, I we have a, a great tool um, on chase.com forward slash cash flow analysis. I want everyone um, after this call, do the surveys um, and we'll send you out the... Um, the workbook that has the link to these tools. I want you guys to become very familiar with these um, tools you could use. 
And different ways you could maximize your cash flow is know your competition. Why is your competition, um, you know, who across the street, down the block, within a mile perimeter, in the same industry, doing better than you? Why do they have a bigger buffer? And think about it. When is the last time have you done a market analysis? A lot of business owners do not do a market analysis and they don't understand the landscape that um, they're navigating in. That's one way to maximize your cash flow. Know your competition. Another way is segment your customer. Know who is your dream customer. Know who is your loyal customer. Know who is your, your best customer. Um, understand, okay, you might have a customer that's going to come in, sell them, but when they come in, they spend big. Then you have your frequent customers who come in all the time but spend less. Then you have your lookalike customer that um, they buy products you offer at different um, businesses. Why is that? And then you have your aspirational customer. What customers do you do you want? You aspire to attain. That's also something that's going to be in the workbook that we provide as well um, as homework. And how can you minimize your cash flow out? And I hope everyone understand what I said about maximizing cash flow in four great ways. Know your competition, segment your customers, consider your prices, collect on your sales. And when I say collect on your sales, check on your policies. Am I still taking check? If you take a check and you come to Chase, the bank will hold your check for over two weeks before um, that check is is cleared and ready for use. Um, you know, update your policies. Um, think about ACH. Think about Zelle. Think about accepting credit cards, even if there is a fee. And, you know, you can talk to your CPA or your attorney, your broker. There's a way to navigate that. Some people are like, oh, I don't want to pay the fee. Can I pass it on to my customer? Some states you can. And like I said, that is a legal question. Definitely check with your um your CPA and your broker so you can understand um, the benefits, the pros, cons, and ramification of doing that. How do you minimize your cash flow out? Vendor relationships. Um, I have clients that have been in business for 20 years and never once leaned at a vendor like, hey, it's time for us to renegotiate this deal. You're making, you know, over a course of five, 10 years, how much ever of hundreds of thousands of millions, millions of dollars off of me using you as a vendor. Um, renegotiate with your vendors. And you don't have to wait five or 10 years. Um, Renegotiate your, your vendor as frequently as possible, uh, whether it's, you know, quarterly or monthly, um, because the landscape change, inflation change, taxes change. And these are stuff that change um, frequently. Um, so, yeah. And uh, and again, um, high performance team is another way to uh, minimize cash flow. Out. Um, does seasonality work for you? Do I really have to have a staff of 10 or five at all time? Because most people cash flow is you know drained by payroll and i'm like okay can i delegate this task can i do this task myself um understand your staff your team understand if seasonality is an option understand who are high performing staff um understand you know who should be given the most hours how you should regulate and delegate hours you don't want to give a low performing um employee you know 40 hours and a high performing employee 20 it, it, the, the the production output is going to be significantly different. And understand, another way to minimize cash out, understand real estate. Um, you're using third, you know, 3,000 square foot for your business in New York. I, I don't even want to tell you how much it costs, but it's going to be 3,000 square foot in Manhattan. It could cost you $15,000 or more. And a lot of people who have these, you know, big space, 3,000 up, they're not even utilizing a half of the space. Think about it. Okay, can I downsize, pay cheaper rent, and put my stuff in storage for 250 a month? You know, that's going to, you know, put more cash in your pocket. And spend it on inventory. I tell people, like, you know, understand your inventory. Understand your product. Do a product analysis. Know what product um, sells the most, what product doesn't. And... One of the industries I've worked with who seems to master that, um, that, that um, their inventory is bars. Bars know, okay, this this product, this liquor sell, this doesn't. So, you know, and they, they stay stock, stay stock and stuff that's going to have a quick turnover, generating the cash the quickest, and let go of inventory that takes really long time to, to generate. And, and that's a great conversation you can have with your accountant about, 
you know, first in, first out, last in, last out, and understand, you know, methods and ways to uh, manage your inventory. And the next way to minimize your cash um, out is marketing. Um, you, a lot of people see influencers and, you know, charging a thousand here, two thousand, three thousand. You might use an influencer in California. How is that going to maximize your business output in um, New York if they don't have a New York base? So make sure when you're spending the money on um, marketing, you have a high ROI. Um, and one of my favorite marketing companies for medical um, um, businesses is this one called Melanin and Medicine. Like, you know, make sure, and a lot of my, you know, doctors have used them, clients, and, you know, they charge you a certain amount of dollars. And at the end of the year, you're like, okay, they charged me $25,000 for marketing, branding, et cetera. What did I get out of it? Wow. Well, they helped me procure six grants that, you know, added up to 500000 They helped me increase my my client base um, through, um, you know, um, search activation. Think about um, market dollars just don't be like okay i'm gonna spend a thousand five thousand on marketing because that's what you know sharon is doing that's what the kim is doing that's what natasha is doing. think about how you're gonna maximize um your marketing dollars and that's it um any questions And while we're waiting for questions to come through, um, I know Kim was mentioning access to the workbook. So I'm going to put up the registration again for today. Um, I'll give you guys some more time because I don't see a lot of registrations. So all of everyone who does register as a follow up, you will be getting uh, that workbook um, with exercises that you could utilize for your business. But yeah, feel free to come off mute, raise your hand um, if you have a question for myself or for Akim. I guess everyone has perfect business and a perfect, um, <laughs> <laughs> they budget themselves great, right? So they... And I would tell the everyone to, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. The chat. Can you put the registration in the chat, please? Thank you. Dr. Neva, can you drop that in the chat, please? Okay. Or maybe there's something we didn't touch on this evening that you were hoping we would discuss. Like I said, this session is for you. So feel free to ask us any questions. And I just want to emphasize, um, those who get the workbook, please do the exercise, um, the cash flow exercise. Use the cash flow tool so you can have an understanding of, you know, what were your inflows for the past year? What were your outflows? And it will also produce a data sheet so you can look at it year over year, month over month. It's a great tool. It's completely free. Take advantage. Okay, I'm about to put it chat now so bear with me Michelle I see you came off mute do you have a question or a comment um I did have a comment I wanted to say thank you both um well thank you all three for hosting this call this evening and I did want to find out so I do understand that we'll have access to the workbook but your the presentation that you gave like I was trying to write really fast um will that be shared with the participants on this poll as well so unfortunately I can't share the presentation, but what I also will put is like certain links um, to jpmorganchase.com that has the resources that I talked about as well. And then you can always feel free to reach out offline if you want to continue the conversation. So I just put the registration in, um, in the chat. Um, our session is recorded. It will be up, you'll be available, but not today. At a later date, you'll be able to rewatch. Thank you. And I appreciate that comment. Thank you. And thank you, Andrea, for your comment. Any other comments or questions or 
I know, as I mentioned too, by registering, you will get a survey from Chase. So like I said, please provide that feedback. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I hope you want to continue more conversations with us. So, you know, please give us that nine or 10 and of course put your feedback but if you want to come off mute now and let us know what other content or is there a specific topic you'd like to learn more about we would love to know something someone said something as andrew said great information yeah i think it was really good um what i wanted to do on this webinar which was accomplished is give you the personal side which Natasha covered and um, the other side as well by Akeem so it's, it's there so um, pretty much guys we're giving you a chance to if you have any other questions but I have a question what do you think is one of the um, Akeem what's the biggest challenge um, do you find with businesses as when they start and when they're growing um, and this is subjective, um, not, you know, uh, this is my opinion based, you know, my experience, um, um, access to capital, a lot of, um, business owners, especially underserved, um, the minority business owners, um, have a lot of issues running into access to capital. And that's because a lot of times they don't know what the bank is looking for. They don't know um what the bank consider a great investment um and um they, they don't know about the all their options not just the bank you know they don't know about cdfi um they don't know about um mwbe special contractor lending um and a lot of uh, business owners don't apply for grants um you know debt is not the only um you know um way to procure new capital you, you know you can get capital from equity um raising whether you know you do a series a and different ways but access to capital has always been what i see um a big obstacle clients face and another obstacle is lack of education um mm -hmm. a lot of times i tell um business owners before you even you know open the doors or try to you know have a capability statement um have a business plan and in your capability statement, include differentiators. Like your capability statement is supposed to, if it's found by someone or you send it to Nike or Adidas or to um, a supplier that you want to work with, they're supposed to be able to know everything about you and your business by just looking at your capability statement. So the education piece, um, I, I find a lot of you know business owners um, lacking and find it challenging <laughs> because... A lot of people qualify for a lot of things, such as like MWB certifications, but a lot of people don't know where to go or how to apply to get those certifications that could potentially give them um, contractual opportunities. Thank you. All right. Any questions? I had a quick one for Natasha. Sorry. Sure. Um, I know um, you had mentioned that you were working with a younger person at one point who didn't have many expenses. Do you guys offer that or programs like that for high school kids at all? Yes, we do. So if you want to learn more about that, I'm going to scan, um, put up this QR code and or you could even just email me offline if you were able to take my contact information. But if you're looking for more conversations, whether it's for youth or if you want to connect with one of our team of experts or even learn more about a Kim and what we do offer with the Coaching for Impact program, um, the scan that QR code for us to follow up. But yet I, yes, I do work with high school students. We do have a curriculum for them on numerous topics, which I'm happy to discuss offline. And then I know since we have a lot of business owners, um, part of a Kim's role is we do offer a Coaching for Impact program, which is a mentorship program and it encompasses consultative services free of charge for the community for eligible business owners. 
typical requirements to be eligible is you do have to be in business for at least two years and you do have to have revenue of at least a hundred thousand. Um, but regardless, even if you're not there yet and just looking for some guidance or support, feel free to reach out to us and, um, Kim will give you those resources. Very helpful. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. So if there's no further question, I'll just, you know, wrap up here. I want to say thank you guys for joining. There's some upcoming events that we have. I stated earlier, we have on, um, in June, we have Foundation for Business. I, I should share the screen again, just for myself to remember. Um, here you go. So Foundation for Business Growth, June 12th, July 10th, we have Social Media Marketing. What's working now in August 14th, we have the National Black Business Month Mixer, and that's going to be in person at the African American um, Museum in Hempstead. All right. So uh, that is it. All right, guys. So we will end here. Thank you so much, Natasha and Akeem, for spending time to do this. And um, they have your information from that QR code, I assume. So. Uh, I'm not sure if it's shared. So if I could briefly just bring it up again, okay. I want to just give everybody that opportunity. Um, now I see that it's sharing because I know sometimes, hey, it's late in the day <laughs> and I think it's sharing and it might not be sharing. But thank you, Dr. Neva, for giving us the space today to present and get this information out to the community. Um, my goal is really to help you guys all be able to achieve your financial goals. So really looking forward to continuing the conversation from today. Um, and as Dr. Neva said, we will be back um, with some different colleagues as well um, to expand on the conversation for business owners. And that's on June 12th. Okay. All right. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you, guys. Have a great evening, everyone.